What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian, and today I'm talking about some of my top tips to get yourself a six-figure or $100,000 software engineering job, especially in 2024 when the job market kind of sucks. I feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk on this. I have been a professional software engineer, more specifically an iOS engineer, for six years now, and it only took me two years to get to that $100,000 six-figure mark. And I didn't go to a fancy college. I didn't do anything crazy. I just went to a normal college in Michigan and ended up getting a job, a couple jobs, which got me to this point. The first thing I wanna get out of the way right away is that $100,000 or six figures is a ton of money. Like that is not a joke. It is a lot of money relative to the overall job market. For software engineers, $100,000, like the baseline, is really not that much money if you look at how much the average software engineer actually makes. So there's a website, if you don't know about it, called levels.fyi, which essentially is the aggregation website for all software engineer salaries at different companies, how much stock they're getting, signing bonuses. Basically, all of the information has been gathered there over years by people just submitting their own salaries. And levels.fyi says the median comp for a software engineer is $177,250. So median for everybody on their website is well over $100,000. It's totally not unobtainable for you to also reach this point. And I say that because I wanted to start this video off with a couple of points. It is a lot of money relative to the overall job market. It's not a ton of money relative to the software engineering market. It's actually well below the median comp from levels and it's totally attainable for you. So let's jump into a couple of points that I think are gonna help. Boot camps and education are obviously the first thing we have to talk about. It used to be a lot more viable if you wanted to be a boot camp engineer, which is basically somebody who didn't go to college for computer science, software engineering, electrical engineering, one of those, and is instead decided to go the boot camp route, which is like a three month or six month training program essentially to get you into the world of software engineering. That used to be a lot more viable back in like 2020 when companies were hiring everybody and anybody they could. But in 2024, it's not as viable as it used to be. So there's another website called layoffs.fyi, which is like the sad and depressing version of levels.fyi, where essentially you can go and see how many people have been laid off in the tech market. And layoffs.fyi this month in April says 17,000 tech workers have been laid off. Now, obviously that is not all software engineering. That's just workers in companies that are defined as tech companies but a large portion of them are software engineers. So now if you are in the job market, you're also competing with all of these people. And that's why I'm saying boot camps are not as viable as they used to be. If that's your only option, then that's just what you're stuck with and that's what you have. If you're like really new into this area and you're trying to decide what to go to college for maybe, computer science is definitely something you want to get a degree in if this is with a field you want to work in. There's other things you can do to make yourself more valid, which we're gonna talk about later. One of them is uh, Google, I think actually is a very valid option. They have certificates or like a certification program through Coursera, it's like 50 bucks a month or something. You can do like UX and product manager uh, certificates through there. In my opinion, it's just gonna help a little bit, but it's not gonna be like game changing. But if you have a bootcamp only background, you might wanna start stacking up some of those courses just to kind of give you more credibility. The type of company that you work at. This is gonna be a huge, huge controversial thing because everybody wants to work at different types of companies. But in my opinion, what I've typically steered towards is startup type companies. Not startups specifically, startup type companies. And what I mean by that are companies like Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat. These companies are multi-billion dollar revenue companies, but they're still kind of startup-esque, if that makes sense. And the reason that I always lean towards these startup type companies, typically they pay a higher wage because you're taking on more risk at a faster paced environment where they're not, you know, they haven't been around for 50, 100 years, but they're gonna pay more. So my methodology for this is super subjective and feel free to roast me in the comments, but I truly stand by this because it's how I've gotten all of my jobs. What I first recommend doing is just going to a job listing website. This is like any job listing website, LinkedIn, Indeed, whatever you want. These are still totally viable ways to apply to jobs. Go to one of those websites and start looking for companies that you think are interesting. The way that's worked for me is I judge them by two things which are totally subjective and probably not fair for me to do, but you have to have a cool logo and you have to have a good name. And I know that makes no sense if you think about it practically, but like those companies typically tend to be like more startup type companies and they typically tend to pay higher salaries. So here's a job listing from LinkedIn for a company called Cypress HCM. 
and they basically don't check either of my boxes. Their logo has a red C on a black background, and their name is that. Nothing wrong with this company. It's probably an awesome you know, company that's doing a lot of business and making a lot of money, but their starting salary that they have listed here is only $110,000. And I say only because that's not very high in this field, especially for an iOS developer. These companies typically are gonna be more outsourcing companies. I think Cypress HDM specifically is like a hiring company. So like they hire, they help you source employees for your company. That's just like not interesting enough for me. There's not enough money in it to be interesting to me to apply to. So this is gonna be a no for me. Now the counter example is uh, we have Square on here, we have Reddit on here, we have a company called CrowdStrike. I don't even know what they do, but they have a cool name and they have a cool logo. So I would honestly probably apply. It's also fully remote, so that's just a huge plus in my opinion. But you kind of get what I'm going for here. The cooler the name and the logo, it kind of means they care about their brand a little bit more. It typically means they're more of like a startup culture kind of company, which also means they probably have VC backing, they're gonna pay more. Obviously this is not true 100% and you're gonna have a lot less job stability doing it this way because a lot of these companies are a lot more, uh, you know, still early on in their life cycle, but more money. The alternative to just cold applying on these websites is networking and referrals. This is like an industry secret, and I say secret because it's not really a secret, but if you don't know about it, then you just don't know. In software engineering, kind of in recruitment in general, but it's really common in software engineering, there are these things called referrals. And what that means is essentially, if you know somebody at a company, you can ask them for a referral, and they basically have their own link that you apply through. And when you apply through it, the recruiting panel or recruiter or whatever can see that your application came through a referral from someone within the company and it usually shows their name or whatever. This does a couple of things for you depending on the company. Essentially what it does is give you priority access to a interview. Sometimes it guarantees an interview and gets you through the screening process. Sometimes it just gives your resume a little bit higher priority when it's going through the review. It kind of depends on the company but it's gonna help you no matter what, having a referral. Now you might be wondering why people wanna give out these referrals, and it's because they can actually make money if you get hired. So for example, if someone at Snapchat gives you a referral, you go through in for the interview and you got priority access because of that referral, you get hired and stay on for six months, the person who gave you the referral gets paid like five, ten thousand dollars a lot of the times. So this kind of created a market for referrals. If you kind of catch my drift, there's an app called Blind, which is essentially like a gossip app for tech workers, you can go on there and ask for referrals for certain companies, like literally anything, like TikTok, although you might not have a job past January, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever, and people that you don't know will give you these referral links because there's no downside to doing it. If you get hired, they get paid. If you don't get hired, nothing happens. There's no negative side effects from giving someone a referral that doesn't make the job process. Referrals are basically always gonna be a better option than cold applying but in lieu of not having referrals or you don't know anyone or you can't get one, cold applying still works in my opinion. You just gotta make sure all the other boxes are checked for yourself and you stand out more than everybody else. Demos and examples are exactly how we will do that, by the way. If you have something that someone can go look at, like on the internet or on the app store or somewhere that they can physically like go themselves and look at it, that's gonna make you seem way better than a candidate who doesn't have that. I'm an iOS engineer, I make iPhone apps, for every job that I've applied to in the past, I've always included a demo app that I've made. Typically I publish it to the app store so I don't have to like work around how to get them the app. I just send them the app store link. And it doesn't have to be the best, newest, coolest app in the world. It could literally be like a calculator or like one of mine was just a fitness tracker. But what it does is give you validity and helps the people know like you're serious and you're actually having the skills to publish an app or publish a website. So do it for whatever your area of expertise is. If you're a web engineer, if you're a front end person, back end, just make something that shows off your skills that someone can look at. A personal website kind of goes along with that as well. And what I mean by that is just buy your own domain name. Mine is just briancarrigay.com and it just lists some of my previous experience. It basically copies things that are already available on my LinkedIn but having them on your own website, especially in software engineering, kind of makes you feel more valid than just you know, linking to a LinkedIn. Being able to put it up there yourself is a lot cooler in my opinion. And it's also free. If you go to like DigitalOcean, they have $0 droplets where you can upload like a static text file, a static HTML file, and basically host your website for free. You just gotta pay for the domain name and that's it. So there's really no reason to not have a personal website. You could literally just copy everything that's on your LinkedIn and just put it on there. Mine is just like a plain text file. There's no images, nothing fancy. 
but there's just one more thing for the recruiter to look at. Study, study, and study more are probably the last three tips that I could put in here. There's a whole lot to this, and I'm sure if you've been in the world so far, you know this, but in software engineering, you have to study for the interview, not for the job. What I mean by that is the things that you're gonna be quizzed on while you're interviewing are very, very rarely the things you'll actually be using in your day-to-day -day job. It's also gonna be way more intense because people are gonna be actively watching you do the interview or asking you questions, where if you're just working on your normal day job, you can go on Stack Overflow or YouTube or uh, you know cuss at the wall because your problem isn't having a solution fast enough. You can't really do that in an interview. If you've never been in a software engineering interview or you haven't been in one for a while, they're not gonna ask you that many things about like, name a time when you had a hard problem to solve and you used teamwork to solve it. They're gonna say like, hey, you know, it's Halloween and you have to hand out candies to these many children, but if this weird thing happens with these children, you have to backtrack to these children and make sure you give them candy. How do you evenly split the candies up? The things that make like absolutely no sense and they're just story problems, but what the recruiter is looking for obviously is for you to pull out uh, computer science data structures and algorithms and kind of mash together a solution and they're gonna be judging you on that solution. My biggest tip here is kind of generic, but go to websites like LeetCode and just practice. I would highly recommend getting LeetCode Premium. It's like a hundred bucks a year, but you can actually go to specific companies that people have submitted interview questions for. So if you really wanna work at Instagram or Google, you can go to those specific profile pages on LeetCode and look at the interview questions that have been asked to candidates from those companies. So you can kind of go into the interview with the upper hand because you kind of know what general area of questions they're gonna be asking you uh, for what type of job you're gonna be interviewing for. The last thing I'll really say on this topic is don't get discouraged. It is an extremely rewarding feeling to get paid a lot of money, but it's very hard to do in the software engineering world because of the interview process. In my opinion, the hard part of software engineering is not software engineering concepts. It's literally the interview. If I didn't have to interview, I'd probably job hunt a lot more or job jump or whatever to get a higher salary. But the thing that always keeps me from doing it is how hard the interview process is. So the more you study, the more likely you're going to be able to get a job through it. But also you're going to get rejected. I got rejected so many times, dozens of times. I had actual interviews where they were like, Hey, you did awesome, but someone solved it in a way that like answered the question a little bit better than you did, so you're not getting the job. Yeah, it's a really hard process and it's really discouraging, but once you get the job, you're gonna be making a ton of money. You'll be uh, you know, recollecting the times that you had these really hard interviews from your uh, Porsche and you'll be happy, but it takes a while to get there. If you have any other tips for people down in the comments below, things that you've been through yourself or tips that you think I didn't mention here, but it really helped you, feel free to throw them in the comments, discuss down there. Uh, this is something that I still go through all the time. I'm still actively studying myself just to stay on top of the interviewing process because it's so different from your day-to-day -day job. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, y'all.